And the available facts are these. Christ was crucified and died on a cross. Christ, that the first Christians did claim that Jesus rose from the dead. And they were convinced of it. That Christians died for that belief, especially the first apostles. That the tomb was empty. Jesus comes back. Okay? That's no. That's the only way you can be true. No, the only, the only, the only thing right. that validates my faith is that Christ rose from the dead. Why does this brother have to worry about his life just because he stopped believing in Islam? Let, let, let's come back to the resurrection. What do you think happened to those, let's use Bart Ehrman's number. Bart Ehrman, by the way, is an agnostic, non-Christian scholar. Argument on some biased Christian now. I'm basing it on an, the leading academic who is himself an apostate and has made his career out of attacking the Christian faith. In his latest book, The Triumph of Christianity, he says that 20 followers of Jesus, the number was around 20, were so convinced that Jesus had risen from the dead that it radicalized them and changed their lives. Reza Aslan also makes that same point, that the people believed that Christ had risen from the dead. So my question to you now to answer is this, what happened 2000 years ago that so convinced those people that Christ had risen from the dead? What happened? They, I, I answered your question. Well, answer it again. They loved him so much that they couldn't accept that he had let them down. That's what it comes down How to. How do you get from that to them believing that Christ had risen from the dead? But Christ didn't rise from the dead, that is a lie. You are, you're not addressing the question I'm asking. The question I am asking is this one. What convinced them that Christ had risen from the dead? I think the whole story regarding the Bible issue of him, of the res... I don't think anything can convince them. I think they were just very upset. They were, that, that's what Resurrection says in his book. They were really, they were, they were mortified that Jesus had let them down. You're not addressing the question. So you're saying that nothing convinced them. So why did they go and preach it? Who? The apostles. Yeah, it's, they were just brainwashed. That's the best way to look By at it. By who? By their own stupidity. So they brainwashed themselves into believing that Christ had risen from the dead and he wasn't dead. He wasn't alive. They were. Ki they felt he. They thought it happened. So they thought it happened. Yeah, it didn't happen. So, the, so they believed it. I don't know the whole apostles, do I? Do I know Paul? Of course, I don't know the apostles. What was the apostles preaching? Were they preaching that Christ had risen spiritually from the dead, or that he rose from the bodily from the dead? They, they just preaching that he's the Messiah, or whatever madness. No, you, you, you don't know what they're preaching. They preach that Christ rose bodily from the dead. Yeah, that's, that, as I explained to you, that is a lie. It's their own imagination. So, they, you're saying that they made it up? Yes, they're liars, they're frauds. Okay, why did they lie? Because to spread Christianity, they wanted to create a religion. Why did they die for that lie? Because they died for Christianity, a lie. They died for something that they knew they were making up? No, they believed it happened, but they didn't. So they believed it happened? Yes. So why did they believe it happened? Because they were brainwashed, I answered your question. They brainwashed themselves into to believe something that they knew was a lie and then died for it. That's your argument. And because of the love that they had for this guy, I believe. Obviously, I don't, I don't think that, you know, he was this perfect guy. I, I think he was basically like a criminal, basically. He, he was someone who wanted to take on the establishment. That is who Jesus was. That's think, how I think you're avoiding the, 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 the point, which is that people, we know that people don't die for something that they know is false. Yeah, but that still doesn't which means point. that Which means that the apostles genuinely yeah. believed that Christ had really risen from the dead. And if they genuinely believed it, we have to ask the question, what convinced them? Now, you're trying to argue that they just convinced one another. Now, groups of people... They love each other, so they're, yeah. they're, they're, you know, they're convincing each other that look... But, but, convince it, but if they're convincing them that Christ had risen bodily from the dead, is what you're saying. Now, the thing is, I can believe, I could have gone with your argument if the apostles had gone out preaching that Christ had risen only spiritually. I could have gone with that. Because people can convince themselves of any spiritual truth. Okay, I'll answer that question. But one second. The thing that they're claiming is that Christ rose bodily from the dead. That the tomb was empty. And also, we have this to consider. Let us consider this other point. The Jewish authorities, you know and I know, didn't like the early Christian movement. They wanted to stop it dead. If Christ didn't rise bodily from the dead, why did they just not produce a body 
drag it through the streets of Jerusalem and say, here is your false messiah, he has not risen from the dead. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you that question. I believe they, they saw the body when he, when he was crucified. He died on that cross, yes? You believe he died on the cross? We both believe that, yeah. yeah okay. So it's pretty obvious they saw his body when he died on the cross. Do they need to keep producing the body two, three times to show everyone, look, this guy... If people are going around saying that he's risen from the dead, yes. So how do you know they didn't produce the body? How do you know? You weren't alive back then. So how do you know? Because if they had produced the body, if yeah, they had produced you know the, body, the body, then, well, if they had produced the body, the whole of the, Christ, the preaching of Peter would have been made into a mockery. Christ, Peter yeah, was going Peter around. Peter, 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 you Peter, keep accusing Peter of lying. Yeah. Peter died for this belief in 64 AD. What belief, what reason, what, what does he gain from dying for a lie? People lie to just, gain something, I do answered, they not? I answered your question. Not really. He wants to spread Christianity. Yes, but he died for that belief. Yeah, but does he not want to spread Christianity? That is the point. He died for the belief, right? He, he died to spread Christianity. That's what I believe. Do people die for what they know is a lie? They die for Christianity, yes. So Peter was lying and then died for it. That makes no sense. He was lying. Look, basically, what, the resurrection never happened. So that's basically, that's a non-argument. It does happen because that's what triggered the first apostles to go out and preach that Christ had risen from the dead. This is what I forgot to tell you. If something is a historical fact, no one would be able to deny it. So why am I denying the resurrection? There are plenty of historical facts that are being denied all the time. But something is... Like the resurrection. Yeah, then it's not a historical fact, is it? No. Like, there, 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 are, there are many historical facts that are in dispute all the time. I'll give you an example. The, the, the classic one, whenever someone's having a debate. Like, the, what, you know, did Hitler come up with the final solution or did the Nazis emerge with an idea? The most current theory is that the Nazis emerged with an idea about the final solution. Now, the, the fact of the matter is, the way that historians come to that conclusion is they take all the available evidence and they find the hypothesis that gives the most explanatory power. You have to give me an hypothesis that accounts for these things. One, Christ died on a cross. Two, the early followers, the very first Christians, were preaching that Christ had risen bodily from the tomb, bodily from the tomb, the empty tomb. Okay, I, so, I, give I, me a, a theory that explains all three. Okay, I, I'll, I'll answer all the questions here very quickly. Okay, okay. yeah. First of all, the empty tomb was a story, was a lie. It was a story made up. Now, you have okay, to, so that, that, that explains, okay, we're saying it's a lie, yeah, go on. I need to explain it very quickly, you have to let me quickly explain it. Basically, the, the, the evangelists who wrote the Bible had to come up with these stories to prove that Jesus was the Messiah. They, they had to come up with these crazy stories that someone died and then came back to life after three days. There was an empty tomb. Uh, uh, when he was 14 years old, Jesus, he was debating with the rabbis. And how does a 14 year old, how does an illiterate peasant who can't read or write debate with the rabbis? These are all lies. They had to come up with these crazy stories. Uh, Pontius Pilate's wife has to get involved. All kinds of madness has to happen. Oh, um, uh, the, the Jews uh, uh, pressured uh, Pontius Pilate into crucifying Jesus. These are all made up stories. Pontius Pilate does not need anyone's approval. Jesus committed treason by attacking the temple. He was crucified. End of story. The resurrection never happened. They had to pick, they had to come up with these crazy ideas that oh you know there was an empty tomb and oh uh, uh, one two hundred people saw the resurrection or whatever madness they're gonna have to come up with. But none of these things happened. These are all stories. So you your know. argument to account for these three historical facts that Christ was they're crucified. Not a historical fact. That's your opinion. No, it is a. It is no. I'm I sorry. Just I'm, to you. I'm sorry. Let Let's be clear. Is the resurrection uh, a historical uh, uh, fact? Uh, let's, no. Let's be really clear. It is an historical fact That's that your Jesus. Opinion. Let me finish. It is a historical fact that Jesus Christ was crucified and died on a cross. It is a historical fact that the first Christians went around preaching that Christ had risen from That's the not dead. The point. the point is the resurrection. No, hold on one second. Is the resurrection hold a on one fact? second. Hold on one second. I got you there. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. Now, so the historical fact is that the first Christians did go around preaching that Christ had resurrected yes. from the dead. And the historical fact is that the tomb was empty. Now, you have said that all these things are lies. Yes. So what you're saying is you don't believe in any history. No, no. Listen to what I'm Give saying. Give me a historian that agrees Bob, with your Bob, position. Bob, listen to what I'm saying. Give me a historian that agrees with listen your position. Listen to what I'm saying. Very no, good. stop. Give me a historian that agrees with your position. You've made a big 
boast about how it's all like. Toys, most of his toys in Name the them. Name them, name them. Most of them. It should be easy for you. You've read into this. Name them. Because Bart Ehrman doesn't agree with you. Bruce Mesker doesn't agree with you. Daniel Wallace doesn't agree with you. James White doesn't agree with you. I'm talking about anyone. Okay. Anyone, Give me Reza anyone, Aslan doesn't agree with you. Reza Aslan didn't say the resurrection happened, so he does agree with me. He <laughs> does not agree with you that the the crucifixion is a lie. That the first Christians went around preaching no, I do believe that was Christ was no, risen no, from no, the dead no, is Bob, a lie. No, Bob. You're saying that all of these things are historical lies. No, I believe he was crucified for treason. Do you believe that the first Christians went around preaching that Christ had risen from the dead? Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure on that one. I'm okay. not really sure on that one. So. Does Reza Aslan believe that the first Christians did not go around teaching that Christ had risen from the dead? I think he believes that they thought that he was the, they, they thought he was the Messiah. They thought he was the Messiah. Okay, you, 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 you. I basically the history and, and the academic historians agree with the three points I've given. I'll explain to you this. You have got no historian that you can back yourself up with. You are simply making assertions based on your, your own personal presuppositions. Okay, I'll explain to you this. Where's your scholarship? I don't need to have a scholarship to prove the resurrection never happened. So, so which of my three need, facts are you disputing? Do I need to say that the resurrection never Which of my three facts are you disputing? I'm disputing the resurrection. I, I haven't declared that as a fact. I declared that Christ was crucified, yeah, that the first Christians yeah, yeah, preached yeah, Christ yeah, as resurrected, no, no, sorry, sorry. and that the tomb was empty. Wait, 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 wait. Which of those wait, wait. facts are you disputing? Yeah. I'm disputing the empty tomb. You're disputing the empty tomb, okay. Yes. I do believe he was crucified for treason. So we, do we, we're in agreement on the first one? Yeah, we agree on the first one, the third one we disagree with. Okay. And what's the second one? The second one is that the first Christians went around preaching that Christ had risen from the dead. I believe they were preaching that Christ existed and he was a uh, he was an amazing man. Okay. But I don't believe they were preaching. So now that he was... bring forth your evidence. Uh, the, what, what do you say? The second one was he was preaching the uh, the gospel. That, that Christ rose from the dead is what the first Christians preached. You're saying that is not true. So now I want you to produce your evidence. No, actually, I think that is true. It I, is true. Yeah, I think. You're right. Okay, so we've established two of my three facts. Yeah, but I first fact: those two. Christ was crucified and died on a cross. Yeah, I said that. Second fact. The first Christians went around preaching that the resurrection actually but happened. But that is not the point of my question. Okay. The point of my question is, is the resurrection a historical fact? You we're, know we're, it's we're, not. We are coming to that. You have, so, you... so in terms of the, the, the preaching of the first Christians, yes. they went around saying Christ had risen bodily from the dead. Okay, yes, I'll give you, I'll give you that one. Okay, why? I, I, I'm not, I wasn't there, was I? So how can I answer that question? It's a ludicrous question okay. to answer. Why is it a ludicrous question? We know historically that what I'm saying is accurate. I... The, f the church existed before the New Testament. You're aware of that, right? Yes. Which testament right. are you talking about at the moment? The New Testament. The New Testament. Yeah. So the, the church existed before the New Testament. If you'll just bear with us, brother, because I'm talking to this guy, thank you. You're going, you're going in another tangent here. Bro. No, I'm really not, because this is evidence. We are talking about specifically no, hold on. The life right, of one Jesus. second. Let me just link it back because you're, you're missing you're missing the link. So let me explain the link for you. Yes. Okay. The reason why I'm bringing it to the New Testament is this, because the New Testament counts as historical evidence of what the first early church believed. Yes. yes okay? Yes. So we can look at it as an historical document to know what those people believed. Now, whether it's true or not is a slightly different question. It's a matter of opinion, yes. But, but what we can know is what the early church believed because they wrote about it to one another. They wrote about it for themselves. They wrote about their beliefs. Let me give you one example. In 1, Cor in 1 Corinthians 15, we have what is indisputably one of the earliest doctrines of the church. Well, the historians agree about this. Listen. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received. So he's saying, I preached it and you received it. Yes. In which you also stand by which you also are saved. So it's talking about the theological implications of this belief. If you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. So again, he's talking about the, the theological implications. These are not our concern at the moment. For I delivered to you as of first importance, what I also received. So he's actually claiming that what he received, he's getting it from an earlier source. So he's, he's crediting an earlier source for what follows. And this is what he says. 
that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised and on the third day, sorry, uh, on the third day according to the scriptures, this New, Testament and, this is New Testament, and he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, and that he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now. Now this and that and that and that, you won't know this from the Greek, but grammatically that and that is not actually necessary in the Greek language unless you're making kind of like um, a PowerPoint presentation to use modern parlance. You're, you're making a list like a shopping list. So in other words, he's reciting an early creed. Now this letter was written between 10 and 20 years after the events that they're talking about, which means that the creed that he is quoting is something that existed before he wrote the letter, which means that we can know with certainty that the earliest Christians believed that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he raised on the third day according to the scriptures okay. and that he appeared to Peter, then to the twelve. After that, this he appeared to more this than 500. This, this is, is not... from the New Testament. Okay. So, yeah. so I have given you evidence as to what the early Christians believed. You're saying that that is not true, so give me your evidence. Look, look that is not... The basic, the basic premise of our conversation today yeah. is in looking into the life of Jesus. I, I, I'm, I'm looking at it from a historical perspective. So am I. I'm not looking at it from a biblical perspective. The Bible is historical evidence, you know that, right? A lot of what the Bible is, is lies, a lot of it. When, of it. no, that's your assertion. Give me your evidence that it is lies. Hey, hey, show us, show us. Okay, 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 I'll give you one. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. According to Rez Raslin's book, I'm gonna give Rez his book, because I mentioned his book before, Yeah. as you know. Is he paying you? <laughs> I, don't know, no, I don't like Rez to be honest. Yes. He's a Muslim, I'm not. Okay. I think, I think he's... A, anyway, no, carry on. What, yeah. what is your evidence okay. that the Bible is lies? Okay, okay. You have to listen to me. Listen very carefully. Okay. okay? Yeah, yeah. We'll listen. Okay. okay. The evidence Reservoir then talks about is certain things in Jesus' past. There's, there's a mention... Uh, there's, a, there's an incident in the Bible where Jesus debates... As a 14-year-old, Jesus debates with the, with the rabbis yep. about the finer things in the scripture. Yes? Yes. Do you agree that it's in the Bible? Yes. Okay. Now Rez Raza is going to explain to you, and I'm going to explain to you, because obviously Rez is not here, so I'll have to do it for him. Rez is going to explain to you that that passage in the Bible is a lie. Why is it a lie? Well, if you let me speak, I'll explain okay. it to you. Yeah. If we, if we look into the historical evidence, now I'm looking from the historical evidence. Yep. I'm not looking from a biblical perspective. Yep. I'm looking at the historical evidence of who Jesus was. So that evidence is... If you let me speak, if you don't keep interrupting okay. me. Okay. Okay. From what we know of Jesus, he was an illiterate peasant. So how can a literate peasant who cannot read or write, who's basically a tramp, someone who's homeless, how can a homeless person who cannot read or write, who's an illiterate peasant, be debating with the rabbis about the final scriptures in the Torah? You so say, I will give you evidence. One second. I will give you evidence from the first century, from the time, by people who were born of the community that knew Jesus, and they say this, and the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, Jesus, and he opened the book and found the place where it was written, which means that he reads, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim uh, release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, gave it back to the attendant and sat down clear evidence from the first century that Jesus could read. That's right. Okay, Reza, there are just two things and I, I, I'm going to have to go. Do you accept this as evidence um, that Christ could read? It's written down in a book. I don't say, I don't say it's yeah, evidence. It's not, it's not just written down in a book. That's it's right. it's written down in a fair. book of the first century. Be fair, be fair, be fair. and answer that question. Why, why are you selective in your evidence? Yes. Because I don't see the Bible as evidence, that's why. Ah, right. Because so, I, have, have I not explained to you for the past half an hour that I think the Bible is a book of lies? You have said that it is a book of lies, ah, and then you have given no evidence for that accusation. Exactly. I have. I what asked, I what asked, evidence? I asked you about Josephus, and even you mentioned that Jesus, Josephus... What? You're, you're, you're once again trying to make an argument from silence. That doesn't work. It's non sequitur. Yeah, you what? can't make an argument from silence. Exactly. Okay. The reason why you can't make an argument from silence is because you can use silence to make any argument. That's why you don't use silence as an argument. But, but, but the point is, there's just two quick things I need to say. 
One was the, the story I just told you about Jesus as a 14 year old debating with the final... Which you said Jesus couldn't read. Yeah. So I said, where is your evidence? And you provided none, okay. except okay. an assertion. Bob, yeah. And Bob. then I contradicted Bob, your Bob. assertion yes. with evidence Bob. that Jesus could read. Bob, yeah. whether Jesus could read or not, as a 14 year old, would he be able to debate with the final scriptures of the, with the rabbis? Clearly. At 14 years old? Clearly. At 14? Yes. Nah, that's a lie. Why is it a lie? I'm Muslim, no, I'm atheist. I don't believe it. You used to be a Muslim. I used to be. I don't, I don't get me killed tonight. Why does this brother have to worry about his life just because he stopped believing in Islam? True. It is, it is seriously wrong. He's trying to get me into trouble. I'm not trying to get you into trouble. Well, it's, it's I think that you have the right not to be a Muslim. And I think it is wrong that you should even have to worry about the fact that you're not a Muslim. Yeah, that's why I don't that's debate with the Muslims. Well. But, but why is it that we are living in Britain in the 21st century and we have, a, by all be it, an atheist, you know, a bit misguided, but otherwise <laughs> a very pleasant guy, yeah. worried about what might happen to him? There's something wrong in the UK and the establishment does not want to deal with it. Yeah, yeah, you're you right. should not, not be here in fear listen, listen, and you should listen, not listen. have to worry. No, Carry I'm, on your point. He's not worried about it. nothing. I'm the Muslim, look. He has just today. said you he's worried. Muslim, so he's not. No, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like to be, ar I don't like to be around them too much I'm, because I think I some of them get a bit... Nothing about I think him. some of them get a bit too aggressive and they get a bit... Yeah, too, yeah, I get that. Yeah. Anyway, yes. you, I'll let you have the final point and we'll, we'll stop there because yeah, we've, been going, yeah, we've I, been going at it a while. I, 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 yeah, I've been speaking for too long, I'm sorry. I just you haven't, you haven't. It's been a really interesting and good debate I'm and sorry discussion. to keep you too long. Like, if you you want, haven't, honestly, you haven't, don't worry. Hey, good I'm just getting tired and I need to walk around a bit. My feet are cold. I, I, I came in last Saturday, sorry, last Sunday looking for you, but Lizzie was here. Yeah. And Lizzie told me you only do the morning shift, that's why you were gone. Right, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I only I do like the morning shift. <laughs> yeah. When I, I spoke to, when I, when I told Lizzie, this is what I said to Lizzie, I said to Lizzie that Jesus is not coming back. Yeah. yeah. And she obviously got incredibly offended by it. And I'm not making this up, after five minutes she ran off. Okay. Well, we've been stood here for more than five minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's one last thing I was going to say to you. The only way Christianity is true, the only way Christianity is right, the only way you're not wasting your life coming here every Sunday, the only way you're not is if Jesus comes back. Okay? That's, no. That's the only way you can be true. No, the only, the only, the only thing right. that validates my faith is that Christ rose from the dead. If Christ Amen. didn't rise from the dead, then he's definitely not coming yeah, back. Yeah. If he did rise from the dead, he definitely is coming back. Amen. So actually, it's the resurrection that is the central to my faith, not the, 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 the as I second to you, advent. As I explained to you, the resurrection never happened. So obviously okay. you're not going to take my you, word you, for it. You, you've asserted that, but with no evidence. So you're saying 100% so, Jesus right, is coming we're gonna, back. Right, we're going to stop there. Yeah. I want to give you this. You've been a very pleasant person to speak to. Thank you. Have a lovely Easter. Thank you. Bob. Don't get too fat on chocolate. No, no, no. You know, and, and maybe next week we'll, we can pick up our conversation again yeah I, I, I'm coming I might if come you back. follow me on Twitter yeah. on Soko films we can communicate directly so we've had a, a very interesting conversation with a, a very fine fellow um, I don't know I can't remember his name um, an Asian um, an Asian atheist a former Muslim um, and, and it's been a very interesting conversation I I think that the the problem for those who want to argue against the resurrection is they have to have a theory that has explanatory power of the available facts. And the available facts are these. Christ was crucified and died on a cross. Christ, the, the first Christians, did claim that Jesus rose from the dead. And they were convinced of it. That Christians died for that belief, especially the first apostles, that the tomb was empty. Whoever comes up with a theory to explain those facts must account for them all equally. And as Dr. David Lycona would point out to you, who is a historian, the theory, the hypothesis with the greatest explanatory power of all the available facts is to say that Christ truly rose from the dead. And what we find by those who deny this is that they cannot account for these facts. They struggle to account for these facts. And what they do instead is they come out with a theory that might explain one fact or two facts, but then doesn't explain the others. The most probable explanation is that the resurrection really occurred. And this is the ultimate proof of the existence of God. 
It is a historical fact that Christ rose from the dead because there is no better explanation to explain man crucified, first believers preaching that he had risen from the dead, those first preachers dying for that faith and the empty tomb. We have not yet had any hypothesis, certainly not the Quranic one, that can better explain these realities. And it isn't just Christians that are arguing these facts. Bart Ehrman agrees Christ was crucified. He's not a Christian. Bart Ehrman agrees that the first Christians were preaching that Christ had risen from the dead. Bart Ehrman agrees that the first Christians, certainly Peter and Paul, died as martyrs. He might dispute the others, but he accepts those too. So what we have is even non-believing academics asserting these facts. Bart Ehrman does disagree with the idea of the empty tomb. I'll give him that. However, the scholarship, the historians, uh, David, Dr. David Lycona, Dr. Daniel Wallace, Dr. Bruce Metzger, Dr. Bart Ehrman, um, Dr. James White, these are, are reputable scholars who would argue that the evidence is clear about these facts. And then we must decide what explains those facts, what narrative explains those facts. And I am personally convinced that the most convincing narrative is that Christ truly rose from the dead. And I am yet to hear a better explanation by atheist or Muslim.